By now, good evening. You've probably heard the breathless reports and dire predictions coming out of the latest financial crisis south of the border. But what might that mean to your bottom line? The bankruptcy of investment giant Lehman Brothers and the near collapse of two other firms has sent some major tremors through the markets. The Toronto Stock Exchange lost 515 points today. It's the steepest one-day drop in nearly eight months. The Dow Jones also down more than 500 points. It's worst one-day percentage loss since the markets reopened after the 9-11 attacks. Elaine Yong begins our coverage. The opening bell of the Wall Street trading day was more like a death knell for one of America's largest investment banks. The Lehman Brothers may have managed to survive wars, the Depression, and 9-11, but it could not weather its country's economic meltdown. Early this morning, the 158-year-old company declared bankruptcy. It sucks. It's a tragedy. How long have you been working there? 23 years. 23 years? And what are you going to do now? I have no idea. Just a shot. The shockwaves were felt around the world. In the UK, 4,500 Lehman's employees are now wondering what happens next. A significant portion of their pay was tied to the firm's stock. What is comments about the collapse of Lehman Brothers? Markets around the world slumped, and in the US, massive sell-offs led to the steepest drop since the September 11th attacks. There had been some speculation the federal government would step in after other bailouts earlier in the year, but for the Lehman Brothers, there was no deal. I never once considered that it was appropriate to put taxpayer money on the line with, 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 uh, in resolving Lehman Brothers. The federal government cannot save every failing company, nor should it try. That has left other struggling Wall Street firms scrambling to keep themselves afloat. Merrill Lynch sold itself to Bank of America in a deal that was brokered in just 48 hours. We're working to reduce disruptions and minimize the impact of these financial market developments on the broader economy. But the nightmare isn't over yet, and it could get much worse. AIG, America's largest insurer, is toppling on the brink. It needs a loan of up to $40 billion this week. Already, worldwide credit-related losses by financial institutions top $500 billion. Of course, any news like this has baby boomers, some of whom have begun the final countdown to their retirement, wondering what will happen to their RRSPs. For others, the general state of the economy and how it relates to their job becomes an issue. We spoke to two of BC's leading experts today for their take on how this might impact our economy. I think the real problem here is that everybody appreciates the United States our biggest customer. Well, obviously, if they're going to get in sort of re recessionary pressure, and former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan says today uh, this may be the worst financial disaster of the century. And bottom line is he thinks a better than 50-50 chance that the U.S. goes to recession. Well, that isn't good news, whether you're talking about our lumber industry for their exports, whether you're talking about auto manufacturing in central Canada. The big worry is their slowdown becomes our slowdown. In fact, today we saw a fairly substantial one-day decline in uh, T-bill rates and even bond yields, and that is uh, suggestive of uh, potential further interest rate declines by the central bank. Uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve meets uh, tomorrow, and there's a growing chance that it could cut its rate. Uh, uh, and in Canada, the Bank of Canada meets in middle of October, and I think there we could potentially see another rate cut. Uh, if not in October, then uh, potentially by the end of the year we'll see a rate cut. Uh, since uh, oil is now below $100 uh, per barrel and the uh, inflationary impact of the uh, higher energy prices seems to be temporary and the slack in the Canadian economy continues to grow, uh, so we can see the Bank of Canada cut rates. Not surprisingly.